You're listening to the Blacktop Banter Podcast, the premier podcast in the asphalt industry, made for contractors with contractors. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Blacktop Banter. And uh, sometimes I have guests on that I didn't meet in person. Sometimes it's people that I just am very curious about. And I'll shoot my shot and I'll say, yeah, be on and do whatever. But uh, I was fortunate enough, as you've probably seen, to be at Ignite Conference this past year over the winter months. And I'm always excited about who uh, Jessica and Amy bring to the table as far as who's going to be speaking, what to expect. We had two speakers, very contrasting styles. I would say, say that much, very, very much, but both really great guys, very genuine. And my guest today is uh, the second speaker at that event, and that's Ramon Ray. Ramon Ray is unapologetically positive and high energy. I can vouch for that. He's also the author of Celebrity CEO, How Entrepreneurs Can Thrive by Building Community and a Strong Personal Brand. He's an in-demand motivational speaker and event host and a leading expert on personal branding and small business growth. He's a serial entrepreneur, much like a lot of us in the asphalt industry, and has started five businesses, sold three of them. He's also the publisher of zoneofgenius.com. As I said, he spoke at Ignite Construction Summit in some beautiful weather in sunny Florida this past winter. We're not going to complain about that at all. And he is here to talk to us today on Blacktop Banner. My friend, thank you so much for joining us. You are so welcome. It's great to be here. And uh, I feel already at home and welcome. Hello to all the Blacktop Banter folks. <laughs> and thanks for having me here, Marvin. I'm excited to be here and serve the audience and serve with you. So thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Before we get into I would love to get your background on how sure. you got from point A to point B because the journey is always the origin story is always my favorite part of a podcast. But one of my favorite things was where you said, date your leads and marry, mm -hmm. you know, marry your customers. Mm -hmm. You spoke on that mainly at, at Ignite and it resonated so well. Like at the beginning, you seen people kind of like, huh? And at the end, they're like, yeah, he gets it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So how do you get to be Ramon, young man? To a guy that tells all these brawny, bearded, tattooed up construction guys, hey, you need to date your leads and marry your customers. This is how you do it. And you get them all nodding in agreement at the end of an hour, hour long session or so. Wow, there's a lot in there. So everybody get your popcorn. We're going to be here for day two as well, <laughs> day three. But here's the summary of it is, you know, I think the summary answering that, you know, the, the, the how to do it, I think is it's about relationships and enjoying people. Mm. I think that we can all be different. We can all show up differently, look different, think different. But as you saw, right, Marvin, that in a totally different industry, me and my brother, Adam Smith, right, totally different industry. But man, I love people. Yep. I understand business. Yep. And if you have those two things and you're a half decent guy or gal, you don't even got to be fully decent, just half decent, you know, <laughs> brush your teeth, maybe, optionally, yeah. <laughs> but you smile and you get a handshake, you'll be all right. So, yes, at Ignite was off the chain amazing. And I think that's why dealing with asphalt, pavement, et cetera, right? You're talking to men and women, largely men, but men and women, we got to build businesses. We got to serve customers. We all got kids. We all, yep. you know, many of us have kids. Many of us have families of one way or another. And so I think that's the commonality. If that answers that question, how? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how you get it done. Like you just find yeah. the common ground, right? You, you realize soon uh, we all got hearts. We all got blood pumping. Yes. And we all got goals. We all got responsibilities. How do we do that better and easier so we sleep easier at night? You find that common ground, you make it there. But I would love to get to know like sure. how, how you get how you get started. Cause I'm Absolutely. sure you went to school like I did, played out of recess, uh <laughs> did did you math, so, did, huh? did English, did that type of stuff, and then all of a sudden here we are, uh right. to where you're in front of a group of a lot of my peers, a lot of guys, and right. uh gain a lot of respect sure. by the end of yeah. it. Yeah. But the short of it is I saw today I have two adult children and I've been married for about 30 years. I live in the vacation capital of the world. Can you guess everybody? Wrong, New Jersey. Um, so that's a little bit about me, where I am today. I, as you said, uh, Marvin, I've started a few businesses, sold a few. But how I got here, listen, I grew up in an uh, amazing uh, home. Uh, my mm -hmm. parents happen to be ministers. Oh, and okay. uh, so, yeah, so grew up in a home, uh, went to school, as you said, played recess. And one of my best friends was, his name was Tommy in Ohio. So that's a little bit of my childhood and played like everybody else. Uh, grew up a lot of my years in Brooklyn, New York. Mm. And there is where I got my first job uh, out of high school before I started to college. One of the first hired at the United Nations. I'm jumping a bit ahead here. Get out. That's right. Who would wow, have thought? That was right? your first job was at United Nations? One of my first. I mean, oh. I was a stock going to grocery store. Whew. I've done the other thing. I was going <laughs> to say, talk about setting the bar high. <laughs> Whoo-wee. <laughs> 
Yeah, now, yeah. I, I, I've done the regular stuff that kids do, but you know, <laughs> but at a at a college, I was at, I was a, a secretary, a clerk, as, as wow. a word, I was called a clerk at the United Nations. <laughs> wow, that's a wild jump to the first one. I was going to say, you, jump. I thought you were going to say head of security. <laughs> Like whoa 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 hold on, hold on. you you got to come here we got to do a pat down yeah, yeah that you, was you know, that, that yeah. was you know years later some secret stuff I can't talk to you about I got public, you, you know what I'm saying? I got you so <laughs> well, so how so how do you transition then from like sure. there to to the next steps yep so I was at the United Nations for a number of years while there I discovered the internet this aspect of the world of AOL CompuServe you know bulletin board systems connecting <sighs> all exactly yeah well that, done thank connecting you, thank all you. that. And discovered that. And then that led to the world of content. And wow, I can blog and post. I can do this, do that. The world of online content. Uh, and then somebody asked me one day, I recall it was Black Enterprise Magazine and Inc. Magazine. Similar time period, carbon copy contracts. Ramon, can you write for us? Because I had been writing and blogging. So I said yes. And wow. that began my journey of being a writer. Second parallel to that, as it were, just to get to the story here, is uh, somebody asked me, Ramon, can you come and speak? An occasion like this, this was 20 some years ago. Somebody heard me and was like, what's your fee? Fee? And that became the journey. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know somebody was paid to speak. So that's the compression of my journey from the United Nations being a civil service employee, as it were, uh, quasi government. But discovering my passion while there, building that, building that. And really, I must say, Marvin, there's a lot of uh, t uh, turns in that. But the rest is history because I got my first gig. You just kept doing it, kept doing it as a speaker. First yeah. gig in the world of content, kept doing it, kept doing it. And then that was the many different turns I took to blogging and content, video and all that, to where today I get to be on black top banter. Yeah. Mark. You yeah, you really made it to the top. I did. Uh, yeah, this is a regression probably uh, from from what it's we're not. at. From what we're at. But it's it's ironic that you say that, right? Because uh we kind of spoke about like before we got on air, like how I got to this point mm -hmm. and I was like I was the first person to start making social media content really legitimately uh, that I know in the asphalt mm -hmm. industry. There might have been people before, but they haven't called me out for saying that mm -hmm. I'm the first yet. So that's good. But same thing. I got interviewed for a magazine about that. And then I got asked to write about social media and how to use it within the asphalt industry. Mm -hmm. I wrote an article about that and I got asked to speak. And once I got asked to speak, it was like, hey, can you write more? Hey, can you come mm. over here and speak? Can you go over there and speak? And I'm, That's right. Um, I'm still. I just now found out, like within like three minutes ago, that I can charge for that. So that'll be that'll be happening, uh, pretty soon. I got a lot of back payments that I need to collect. Come on, on that. I gotta Let's feel go. it. I gotta feel. No, uh, we've been compensated well for that over the years, yeah. which is fantastic. But isn't that but, nice, right? You don't know that what you love. Somebody yes. will pay me to do this. Yeah, and you don't even like. It didn't even matter. Like they were like, I, I I really don't even remember the first amount. All I remember mm -hmm. is they said, "How's this?" And I was like, "Yes." Like I didn't even wait. Like, "Yep, sure, we're well, yeah, I'm getting paid to do this." Uh, That's right. Yeah, it's fantastic. But it's such a it's such a dynamic thing to see. You know that your talent that you don't really realize is there. I'm gonna. I think you'll agree with me, Ramon. That like all of a sudden it comes to the surface, and you're like, mm -hmm. "Oh, this is what I'm good at. This is mm -hmm. what I like." Mm -hmm. I really thought I was gonna be at United Nations forever. That's right. Right. Like I always, I thought, you know, yeah, I'm good with a broom doing seal code on, on pavement. This is probably what I'm going to do forever mm -hmm. until all of a sudden you don't. And you're like, oh, this is what I was meant for. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. And sometimes there are guys where they're meant to be on the paver. They're meant to be in the office running their business. Mm -hmm. They're meant to do a lot of different things, but they do need insight and guidance and help. And they come to events like you speak at and I speak at to mm -hmm. where all of a sudden they're like, there's the insight I was looking for. This made it all worth it. Right. right. This one thing. So um, I really appreciate you coming in and speaking to us at Ignite and that Absolutely. Um, what we do is, is semi quasi normal uh, within the <laughs> asphalt industry. Now, I'm not alone as I got a lot of people that speak. But tell us a little bit about the crowds that you speak to and what you speak about. Um, I did mention that you you're one, you're, you know, one of the tangents that you that you speak about, which I mm. loved was um, dating your leads. But you speak about a number of different things to a number mm. of different people. Can you kind of sure. graze over that for us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, two things I do. One is I'm increasingly more and more, Marvin, as you kind of hinted, you keep doing things. People call you things. So one broad things Ramon does is I just host great business conferences. 
more and more like Ramon, we're having a conference on whatever. Make sure it's not boring. So as a host, <laughs> as an MC of large events. So that's one. But yeah. number two, yes, the topics I speak about, definitely the marketing side, date your leads, marry your customer, being, building your personal brand. But Marvin, you know the other thing increasingly, and I don't have some Harvard degree on it or, or expertise, but is human connections in a digital world, helping mm. people see, like we're doing here, mm -hmm. we're digital. There's some digital you have to do in every aspect of business. AI is here and et cetera. But you know what? I can still say good morning to Marvin. I can still reach out and say thank you. I can still give him a hug. So how are we human, even though we're increasingly in a digital world? That's one of my most in-demand topics that's growing by far. Which one do you find um, that people is, – is it crowd is it crowd sensitive? Like mm. which one resonates with people the most? Because with you, uh, you know, being a serial entrepreneur and whatnot, you've had a, you've had a good amount of experience in business. Mm. And for the most part, I would imagine like those topics really seem to resonate well mm -hmm. with your crowd. Am I correct on that? Correct. Yes. The, the yeah. business topics. Correct. But with the growth of, of, of high technology we're getting into, even and I bet in your industry, technology is getting in there more and yeah. more. It's that human connections in a digital world. So, yeah. yes, it has been personal branding and marketing. But more and more, I realize, you know, Ramon, we've talked about this for 30 years now. Let's get your insights and just being kind to our neighbor. You know what I enjoyed a lot, Ramon, when you were at Ignite is when you stayed after mm. and the beforehand because we would come up. I was in line mm -hmm. to speak to you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I could overhear different conversations, and they weren't. They were somewhat within the framework of what you spoke about, but then they would get off onto a different area of that topic and whatnot. And I think that your experience in business. Um, is fantastic because it allows you to speak about a vast array of things. I think the natural thing about you is the high energy level and just how exciting you make things. I loved when you were like, yeah, they just want me to be there to MC," And it's like, dude, that is totally you. That's like right. that is literally you tell me I don't got any Thank deliverables. You. All I got to do is just be me and enjoy the night. <laughs> I'm in like, we're making this thing happen. So yes. um, what questions do you get asked? Mm most often about uh, like when you're in when i was in line there i was like sure hey hey can you be on my podcast i'd love to bring yeah. that energy level to it but that's an outside of the box question but most of the time afterward like um what is it or hey can we work with you hey can you guide me on this like what or, what are the, some of the most common questions you get yeah i think two or three things come to mind of course it depends on the industry and these are not related but one question is definitely as people, and, and I thank God for that. You know, we all have a talent or skill, and I'm thank you for seeing that. Uh, but is, is, is communication, is speaking, is, is it is easy for me. Again, I'm not good in math, not good in numbers. You know, I've got a lot of things that I'm not good at. But, you know, wake me up, slap me in the face, pour cold water on me. I hit the stage. I'm fine. No problem. Mm, so mm, mm. I just love it. I, I did. It's an, it's an, it's to be able to read the room. I was at a big event in San Diego and yes, the high energy, the humor. I like that. And thank you, Marvin. But a lady said something really serious. I was, I had to bring the energy differently. She was hurting. Mm. And even now I feel like tearing up. I don't even remember the question, but I know how it made me feel. So that's one. Is that Ramon just, how do you do that? Or we talk about it together, Marvin, I'm sure you could do it. So just talking yeah. to professionals, that aspect of it's not always just, woo. no, sometimes Marvin just said something happened to his family. No, I got to yeah. verbally embrace Marvin. And the second thing, Marvin, is mindset. As business owners, yeah. Facebook ads and retargeting I and know. even pavement, man, man, yeah. It's up here, man. Yeah. This is what's rough. So those are probably the two broad things I can think of. In my opinion, Dynapack CC900G Roller is the best roller on the market for driveway and small parking lot paving contractors. The seismic technology in these rollers is unbeatable for the smoothness and compaction they provide. Take my word for it or visit Dynapack.com to find a dealer near you. Hey, Blacktop Banner fans. This is Michael with Aquafault. Aquafault is the only permanent repair material for asphalt and concrete that uses water. An installation is simple. Just pour add water, and tamp. It's that easy. An Aquafault repair can be open to traffic immediately and fully sealed within 24 hours. Visit Aquafault.com to learn more. I work closely with KM International to design what I believe is the best seal coating unit on the market. The Blacktop Banner Edition seal coating unit available in both 550 and 700 gallon versions. Learn more about the unit by visiting KMInternational.com. Quick startups, fume-free, automatic agitator shutoff, a splash-proof lid, and pumping on demand, these features are essential for any serious asphalt maintenance contractor. 
Elevate your game with the Craftco Super Shot line of melters by visiting Craftco.com today. Hi, contractors. It's Kyla from Wiscoat. We use Stencil Plus for all of our pavement marking stencils. You can save 10% on your stencil order by using code BB10 during checkout at StencilPlus.com or by calling 877-372-6055. In the past year, Jobber has been our CRM of choice at Wiscode, and it's made our world exponentially better efficiency-wise. For our small seal coating company, it has helped build the solid foundation we can scale from. Jobber is now a sponsor of Blacktop Banter and helps bring this show to you. With this partnership, Jobber is offering an exclusive savings to BB listeners of 20% off for six months. To take advantage of this, find the Jobber link in the show description and get to improving your process today. You'll remember this. When we were at Ignite, I was sitting next to parking lot Pete. Pete, Pete got a book from you, right? And then yes. you, you were like, Marvin, like you got, you're too nice. And I get told that a lot, right? I don't know what we're talking about, but you're like, you're too nice. You're like, look at Pete and tell Pete no. And I was like, no. And you're like, no, dude. You don't tell me no. Tell Pete no. Yes. And at the end, like I was having, you're like, put your finger in his face and tell him no. Yes. Pete, Pete hasn't spoke to me to this day. We used to be friends. Pete, call your boy. Yeah, call Pete, Marvin. Call, call Marvin, Marvin Pete. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. We 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 just we just met and spoke Absolutely. again. But yeah, I think that I think it resonates, man. And where where that commonality is, I keep going back to it. Um, it's on the business side. Mm-hmm. And, we we feel tough sometimes stretching ourselves. Like I'm sure when you got going, it wasn't, Hey, I'm going to write a book. Hey, I'm going to open five businesses. Like it was not that realm. Right. But we get stretched and then an opportunity goes and we say yes. And then we say yes. And then we say mm-hmm. yes. And then we say yes. And then pretty soon you're like, I've said yes to everything. Mm. I don't think I can lift all this anymore. Um, I don't want to say no. What, what am I feeling? And what we feel a lot of times this year in the asphalt industry is the snow has melted. It's time to get going. Mm. We have jobs we left over from last year, people to bring back, service equipment, do all these things, hot, make new hires, do whatever. And a common word, buzzword about in our industry this time Mm. of year is burnout. Mm. And I recently seen a post of yours about burnout. So Mm. could you please um, define it in your, in your terms, what burnout is? And then how do we overcome slash avoid that thing, but yet still feel like we're performing well? Yeah, yeah. burnout's a real thing, man. And I can't wait to banter with you about this right now. I want to hear your input I'm ready. as well. <laughs> but I think that, so the definition of it, again, not looking at dictionary, but my world, I think is when you feel in that constant, not one day, but that consistent, this is week three, week four, month two, you feel overwhelmed, frustrated, anxious, anxiety, You're not happy. You wake up and it's like Groundhog's Day all over again. It never stops. So I think that's that feeling where it's Mm -hmm. not healthy, not good. We're not talking about Marvin's got to get to the airport real quick, go with his boys on a fishing trip, and he's a little late, and he's chill when he sits down. That's not burnout. That's just temporary rushing. Right. But I'm talking about that feeling that Marvin or Ramon has. Every time you wake up, the wife is on you. You wake up, the kids are on you. You wake up, the business is on you. You wake up, the banks are calling you. You wake up, that line of credit's being called. You wake up, three of your employees, you have not hired yet. You wake up and you still got that toothache because you didn't have time to go to the dentist yet. Yep. And your biggest client said, you know what? We're not renewing our contract. Yep. And that happens day after day after day. That's burnout. Let me pause, Marvin, and hear from you. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, as soon as my mind turns on, and it happen- it's happening right now, right? And uh, it's been happening now for the last two weeks. I had a yeah. meeting with my team this morning and let them know that that's where I'm at right now. Mm. I'm doing my best. Uh, we have a lot on our plate on the asphalt business side, and yet we're still, most of the time this time of year, we're shutting down on the blacktop mm-hmm. banter, really being active. We'll do our podcast on social media posts. But we have another event coming up at the end of this month, World of Asphalt. And we're prepping for that. Hey, do we have the carpet ordered? Hey, do we have the schedule in order? Mm. When do we get there? When do you get there? When do I get there? Are we all going to be there on time? Mm. Oh, there's a there's an event that night? Oh, shoot, I didn't know that. I'm going to try to get in there. Immediately when I wake up, my brain is on that mode. It might not have been thinking about these things when it went to bed, but as soon as my eyes open, it does. Right. And, and guess what I got? I have a young son in the room next door that I need to help get ready for school that day. Listen to go. him. Help him understand today. He said, dad, I got practice after school. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I booked a call with the Blacktop Banner Success Group tonight. We got to call your mom. Your mom has to help get you there. If not, we can't go there, do whatever. 
that's burnout. Like that is, burnout. is, is way, way, way too much. And I'll tell you what happens to me, Ramon. I have all these things to do. Guess what I end up doing? None of them. I get, I get paralysis yeah, yeah. because there's so much that I don't know where to start. Yeah. I have a Trello board, you know, what Trello is, yeah, yeah that's course. software, right? So I have a Trello board. Mm -hmm. I got on there the other day, yesterday. Let, let me guess. Dude, can I guess? Yeah. Yeah. You just stared at it. I did. Cause I was like, did I, I do know. this? Yeah. Did I not do this? And then Kyla, who's <laughs> here today is my admin. I'm like, Kyla, yeah. did we do this? She's like, yes. We already yeah, did that. Yeah. So I'm trying to get stuff off the Trello board. Meanwhile, I got scraps of paper where I'm adding stuff. I spent a whole day mm. just organizing the things that I need to do and not do and didn't get any of them done. Mm. When I woke up today, guess what happened? We had a meeting and 10 more things got added to mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, whose life is this? Is this a life? What am I doing? And why am I doing it? Mm. Right. But I, I, just got back from a walk. I did a walk before we got on the podcast. Very good. Right? Clear my mind, took some breath, got some got some sun. We have sun now in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. That's happening again. Thank God. <laughs> uh, to where, like, I'm getting some rays. I'm like, all right, breathe. Let's yeah. relax. We yeah. got we got three things to do this afternoon. Let's knock those out, and then we'll get some time to do whatever it is. But that's my definition of burnout is it's when it's just, quote, unquote, too much for too yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. And I'm with you with that. I mean, sometimes, listen here, I'm sitting here in Zone of Genius, Ramon Ray Global Headquarters, which is me and me right now, and I feel you. So I think if I have to go to the next thing, what do we do about it? And thank you for sharing that, Marvin, because me and Marvin, those listening, we are real people. Oh, so sir, we go yes, through sir. it. Oh, and I'll add one more side note. Love my family, as I'm sure you love your family, but it's amazing. Like I had one of my, in case the person is listening to this, one of my family members, insurance bill came in. They're like, you know what? This should be $200 less. Call them and blah, 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 blah. Get on it. You probably know who that was. Mm -hmm. You know, but said it. And the other, I'm saying to myself, you know what? This $200 issue with our insurance, I don't even care about it. But it was important to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you go through that. It's like, you know, somebody or, the, or our children who we love, you know, hey, I, I, I need the lollipop. I can't get it. You want to scream because you're like, I got five guys. Oh, I got to figure gosh. out how to pay. Yeah. But we got to do it. So how do we? Should we move to how do we? How do we deal with this? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you what helps me. I'm very, yeah. I'm, I'm awful at this. But the Trello board is a part of it. The yeah. other thing is I keep a notepad by my bed. Yes. And like, for some reason, when I open my eyes, when my, I don't even get to open my eyes. My brain comes on. It's like this, 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 and this need done today. But which, thank God, my brain somehow organizes it yes. in my sleep, right? So then I'll be like, jot, 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 jot. And I'll take mm -hmm. that piece of paper. I'll hold it with me. Take it to my coffee. Mm -hmm. I take my coffee to my bag. I set it by my bag. Then I put it in my truck. Then I bring it to the office and I'll add it to my Trello board or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, organization and preparation has been key. One other thing has been delegation. I'm fortunate enough to yes. be in a position to delegate some things. Um, whatever is not Marvin has to do this, I delegate away for now. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be, you have to be a little... Uh, lenient with that because it's not going to get done perfectly how you would have done it, right. but it's getting done. And if you're in burnout mode, you want to got it done anyways. So whatever we get to is whatever That's we right. get to. But the, I, I loved your analogy, Ramon, about uh, the lollipop thing, mm. because uh, I don't have a whiteboard with me, but Kyla, who I love dearly is my admin here. She mm. saves me a lot of days. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a whiteboard and I put up like I don't know how to, it looked like a thermometer kind mm -hmm. of, right? I said, here's your thermometer, Kyla. Mm. And then here's my thermometer. And mm. I can't remember what the topic was. I said, see where this ranks on your thermometer? Very, very high. I said, see where it ranks on mine? Very, very low. I said, so yes, you're mad at me that I yes. don't feel as important about it. But above that thing is all these things that only I can do that are time sensitive right now. That's so right. I know you want to, I know you want to talk to me about this thing and I know you want my input on it. But when I say do whatever you want, it's not because I don't care. It's because I need you to do whatever you want. That is a gem. And I'm telling you, that is the step towards freedom with that. Do you see how that balance goes, Marvin? A, our teams, as I have as well, I trust you. You're empowered. Noting that mistakes may or may not happen. They're not going to be, as Dave Ramsey says in his Southern drawl, but did you want to make sure you don't make fatal errors? That word is fatal. <laughs> so we don't want fatal errors. Little mistakes may happen or not. Or even if it did, Marvin may say, you know what, Kayla? Kayla, mm -hmm. you did it better than I could do it. So my point being, so A, delegation. Number two, empowering our team move forward. Because I think I fall into that too, Marvin. It's amazing how like you and I are. I've had to tell my team exact same thing. Listen, her name is Mayanne. I said, Mayanne, you have the full authority to do it. 
because I trust you. And she was like, really? I'm like, yes, so we can move forward. So I think that's number three. Number four, I like the aspect, though, of prioritization. I want to underline that, Marvin, because mm-hmm. I think it's essential. When I that's wake a good up, one. yeah, and we all wake up with our brains in, there's only a certain amount of hours in a day. Mm-hmm. What are the two or three things I have to get done today? And then the second thing I'll add to that prioritization, let's give ourselves freedom to take a break. Sometimes mm-hmm. just taking a walk, saying, stop, I'm back. Yeah. Just that can help. Whether gym, walking, seeing a movie real quick on Netflix. Marvin, I'm going to tell you right now, full out. I have no shame when I'm overwhelmed. Stop. Let me put on some violent terrorist anti-police movie for 15 minutes. Yes. <laughs> and just do that. And I come back. So yeah. prior- delegation, prioritization, giving ourselves space to to decompress and come right back. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too, because it's like right now uh, with all, you know, what what do we think the answer is, right? When when you have a huge plate and a, a lot on it is to eat it all the day. Right. Like we're gonna do it. You know what? I'm gonna I'm done at set. I'm mm-hmm. start at seven. I'm gonna get done at seven. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do twelve hours. Mm-hmm. That, that sometimes that is the worst mistake I've That's ever right. made. It's like, dude, you should have did eight hours and took four That's hours right. and went fishing, hiked up on the bluff, come back down, went to That's bed, right. woke up, and did a good eight hours. I'd rather do a good eight hours than a crappy. 12 hours right. right it's like right. It's, it's just unproductive as far as that goes but yeah organization is key one thing uh, this episode is i promise this episode of black top banner is not sponsored by trello <laughs> trello has like um labels on there where you can put the urgency right of like these are the ones and we've done a good job now with that software of chris who's our producer here at black top banner is on there kyla who is my admin and right mm-hmm. hand is on there and you can add them to it and be like, hey, it, Marvin, I'm free over here. I'm going to take this one, and I'll get it taken care of over here. Right. So we were talking about World of Asphalt earlier. Kyla, who we prepared, she never went to an uh, event with us before. Um, we prepared three months in advance for Pavex, which was last month, mm-hmm. which the company that hosts Ignite hosts Pavex. Right. Um, and we got there, right? There's all these things she had never done before, and all these things I had put on her and made her organize and get together. We get there. After the first day or two, she looks at me, she's like, this is going really, really well. Like the, I, I was really nervous. And there were times when her and I were like this in those three months, right? Where I'm like, I don't care, do it. Uh, and she was like, wow, it's going really well. And I was like, why do you think that is? It's because we really, really, really prepared well for this, right. right? Now this time, right, we had our meeting today and I had a bunch of stuff that I was curious about whether or not we checked those boxes. And Kyle was like, did it, done. Mm. 2 p.m. I'll be there Saturday. All right, I'll take that stuff. You guys go on, do whatever. Like she's she's walking the walk now. And that's because we prioritize, we trained. She's went through the system now. Of, mm. This is not high on Marvin's thermometer. Right. This is very high on Marvin's thermometer. She'll warn me about things now. Like even though she knows she can't really do anything with it, she'll be like, hey, just so you know, this is done it today at 3 p.m. You got to do that's this. Right. It's like, oh, okay. So one thing I think that has helped, to be honest with you, which is just wild that this is the answer because it seems to be the answer to everything mm. is communication seems to help Come on now. now a lot. We at church now, man. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, communication seems to help with burnout a lot. Even yes. just communicating that you're burned out can help yeah. out a lot because Ooh. it allows people to be like, where can I help? Yes. All right, yeah. Yes. I don't want to. They know that if I'm burned out and it's going to stress me, the culture then becomes stress and they're going to be stressed because I'm stressed or whatever it is. So I think communication is key. What about you? Oh, no, it's fabulous. And I'm telling you, even communication with our families, I told my wife just a few minutes ago, I was going through a a slow period and things are not on kilter and what I'm doing, but she knows it. And I can feel her changing her, her tune, her tone or vibration or energy, whatever you want to call it towards me, which is helpful. And so Mm -hmm. I think that communication to our teams Mm -hmm. To our families also is so important. So I think that communication will help because then people can give you grace and pick up slack. So I think the communication for sure is absolutely important. And I think the aspect of going, I think you can't, it can't help to the aspect of pre-planning. I found Mm. that a lot of burnout happens, Marvin, again, you can't help IRS and climate, the government and industry and things that are beyond your control. But when you plan ahead, you know what's happening on December 8th. You know what's happening on December, March 4th. You mm-hmm. know what's happening on April 3rd. Mm-hmm. Whatever, making these dates up. People, plan for it. Yeah. I find myself, the more rushed I am. Come oh, on now. Dang. Four days from now, which I stopped, didn't know it rushed it, but no. 
when it's planned, that means the unexpected things that will invariably happen, we still got it. Like Kayla yeah. said, Red or Kyla said, right? It's going well. You plan for it. So I think yeah. that aspect of pre-planning project management, that I think is the biggest thing all of us leaders can do. Because when we plan for it, now we have it. And, and documentation. Documentation mm. is well, however it is for you. But documentation is very important to help with this reduction of burnout. Because burnout will happen. But yeah. you get it less and less and manage it better when you feel a bit more of of controlled chaos. Yeah, it's one of these. It's one of those things where you know if it gets too too heavy, it's very detrimental. It's, to me, it's like going to the gym, right? Like you don't go in there and just try to like bench press seven hundred, eight hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. You've never been in there before, right? right. Like, that's very detrimental if you try to lift all that weight at once. But if you slowly build up to it which I'm not saying add a little stressors here and there, but right. challenge yourself, like challenge yourself and stretch yourself a little bit, stretch yourself a little bit. It's okay to be like, all right, that's a little much. I'm going to dial back from that a that's little right. bit. Right. That's or, right. Hey, guess what? We can't make that event or, Hey, you know, we got to cancel our calls for this week. Can you reschedule for like a couple mm -hmm. months out or whatever? That's totally okay with, with, with doing it. I, I worry. Think you know, I'm not thankful that Instagram was down the other day. I'm sure you've seen that like Instagram, Facebook <laughs> went down the other day and like the whole world started to panic. Yes. But all of a sudden I was like, Oh, cool. I don't have to make posts. I have an excuse now That's to right. like not do That's this right. and, and not do this and that. I think it's okay to like that they that does a Instagram does a tough job on making us think that we need to be doing yes. quote unquote 10x of everything and we need to be going here and driving this and doing that versus are you happy? Are you sleeping good? Mm -hmm. Like can you eat? Like are you able to eat? Are you too worried about that? Um like, I, I think we need to dial back in that regard. One thing you were talking about was being organized in mm -hmm. that regard and planning. Uh, we got a couple of what they call the big ass calendars. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, I, and, yes. and I, I, oh, dude, I planned out my whole <laughs> year on that. Oh, my God. This I is planned funny. Out I planned out my whole year. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, yeah. So Jesse, so Jesse, I was like, dude, we got to get one of these. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm not just getting one. I'm going to get three of them. Come on! I gave, I gave my son one. My son's thirteen. Right. I'm like, dude, you need to plan out your whole year so I know That's what you right. got going on. You know what I got going on. And then we had we put a huge one here at Blacktop Banner of like, this is where we're gonna be. This is where Marvin's gonna be. This is where Kyla's gonna be. This is Chris's time off. This is what we're gonna be doing during this amount of time. That amount of time. You know what? There's a thing in your brain is like fear of the unknown. Uh, that's not unknown when you walk up and look to it every day. That's exactly so right. breathe a little easier with yes. some of that organization yes. and stuff. And, and Marvin, I just want to add more. That works with everything. It's amazing how that aspect of planning and pre-planning, everything in life you can't plan. But I think that's half the battle. Even yeah. things in our personal lives, personal things, church, family, uh, you know, community, work, whatever it is, you try to plan ahead. And that doesn't mean also you have to be regimented. That, oh, no, mm -hmm. we can't do this. But I think part of the big-ass calendar principle is at least it's there. You have a target. And as our mutual friend Adam Smith, another thing going back to doing big things, he says, and in, in what we said before, take things in small chunks. To yep. your point, you're not going to be able to bench press 850 or 800 and 700, whatever it is, and once. But I bet you can start with 20 and 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. and 200. So I just want to add that taking things in small chunks, then yep. also – you don't feel the, the 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 negativity on yourself that you failed. Stop yeah. complaining because you didn't do seven hundred. No, be victorious that you did two hundred. Yeah, start yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Be be happy you did a hundred seven yeah. times, and we still lifted yeah. the same amount of weight, but it didn't hurt us this time. You yeah, know what I mean, it might took a little longer, but it didn't hurt us when we were able to do it. I think that's, that's the right. thing. Everybody's in such a hurry, Ramon, to get somewhere fast. Yes, and it's yes. like, man. No, uh, and the internet's done a good job of that. Get rich quick, lose 50 pounds in a week, right. whatever, whatever it is, dude. It's like, <laughs> that doesn't work yes. that way. Get abs like, in it a does. minute. Yeah, get abs in a minute. Yeah. So, guess what we're doing? 59 second abs, not 60 <laughs> second abs. We're doing 59 second abs. Is that we're what it is now? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. But somebody's going to go 58 next. Like, oh, guess what? We're doing, what's this do to your brain? 58 right. second abs. Yeah. I think, uh, I think, you know, you subliminally that becomes you, yes. if you're scrolling a lot, it subliminally becomes in your brain what your expectation of what you should do is. That's right. And that's totally wrong. Everybody's individual. We all have our personal runs and our personal personal paths on this mm -hmm. thing. And I think that all paces are different. I have friends that um, run eight figure businesses. I have no desire to do that. I don't mm -hmm. think my brain would ever be able to do it. it asphalt businesses. I, I understand. Say. But um, I don't think my brain, my stress level, my happiness level would exist within that realm. For some people, it does. Yeah. That is yeah. what trips their trigger. That's what like, That's right. gets them excited about the day. Um, not me. I, I have yeah. more excitement about, 
I pushed myself and I freed up two hours to mm. go watch a movie with my daughter at the movie theater. Or we went fishing and didn't catch anything, but we got to see the sunset. Whatever it is, mm. I, that's kind of what gets me gets me excited is uh, I feel like I won. Like I yes. didn't I didn't right. jump into the machine that the man, quote unquote, created. Mm-hmm. I was able to do it my own way and freed up time to enjoy my life while I'm here and this gift that we got of it. I want to ask you one last question, which we sure. always ask every guest. What piece of advice would you have from your life experience that you would love to share with us, whether that's a piece of advice that you received or something you learned along the way? Yeah. Don't be afraid to take risks. I find that one thing that holds people back, my mentor, Seth Godin, has a book, What to Do When It's Your Turn, It's Always Your Turn, is to launch. Launch imperfectly. Not crazy, not dangerous, not to hurt your family, take away your house and all that, but don't be afraid. Don't stay there forever. What if, what if? Try it. The Mm. worst that can happen, you fall, you skin your knee. Marvin Ramon laugh at you a little bit. That's the worst that can happen? (laughs) Get back up and keep going, and then we'll cheer you. So take risks. Don't be afraid to start and keep going is my best piece of advice I can give. Man, I love it. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback off of that once. I seen a Please. meme once cause I'm on the internet and it was, <laughs> it was a picture of Betty White. I think it was a quote by Betty White. And she's like, when you're in 65 years, no one's going to care what you did anyways. So just mm. do what you want. Right. And it was like, Oh, cool. All right. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to jump. Right. right. And That's right. you know, you're so worried what everyone else is thinking. They have their whole lives going on with tons That's of right. stuff going on inside, but they don't really care all that That's much. Right. They might raise an eyebrow for a second, but then they're going to focus on what they got. So I think it's a beautiful piece of advice. RamonRay.com yes, sir. was where we can find you. But where can we find you online? You and I connect quite a bit on uh, LinkedIn back mm-hmm. and forth, I've mm-hmm. noticed. Yeah, yeah. All, listen, all the platforms, RamonRay.com is the best place, or uh, my media site, ZoneOfGenius.com. But if you Google Ramon Ray, I'll come up on Instagram, Threads, all the yeah. platforms. I don't think fax machine or carrier pigeon, but everything else, Ramon Ray. <laughs> yeah, Pony Express. I got a letter the other day That's from right. Ramon Ray. That was the only one I think of the ancient times that made it. The uh, message in a bottle might work. We put it. I don't, I, is there a river? Ohio River might run from me to you. Maybe I hey, guess I don't you really know. know. Could you never know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and Marvin, I, can I just tell you, you're a ball of fun. I can't wait to keep learning from you. Thank you for the <laughs> service, the work you do with Blacktop Banter and your team. So thank you, man. You're just yeah. you're just amazing. A lot of fun. Ramon, I really, really appreciate you joining me, my friend. I love this conversation. I thank hope you. we get to do it again sometime. All day. All righty. Sounds like a plan. All right. For myself here in Wisconsin in the Blacktop Banter studio and for Ramon Ray in the vacation capital of the world, New Jersey, this is Blacktop Banner where we speak asphalt. Peace. Hey, everybody, Marvin here from Blacktop Banter. And if you enjoy the podcast and what we've been bringing to the industry, you can support us through a one-time or recurring donation at blacktopbanter.com. There we have a support tab. You click that and choose your path from there. If you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do us a favor and leave a review there for us as well. As always, we speak asphalt, and thanks for your support.